Welcome to the Mortgage Update with Dan Frio. For over 10 years, Dan has been helping AM1160 listeners. With so many companies to choose from and hundreds of loan options, the mortgage process can be confusing and costly. Be sure to listen each day for Dan and learn the difference between FHA, VA, and conventional loans. You'll also learn how to negotiate lower interest rates and fees, as well as steps to buying your first home and whether refinancing makes sense. Stay tuned to find out why Chicago's top realtors are choosing Dan Frio. Welcome back to the Mortgage Update with Dan Frio. I, of course, am Dan Frio. And as I start every show, please just, um, I won't go through all the, all the ways on how to find me. Just Google me. You, probably the best way to do it is just Google Dan Frio, D-A-N-F-R-I-O, or the Mortgage Update with Dan Frio. You're going to find everything and anything. Please check out my YouTube channel. Uh, it's, it's blowing up right now. And what we're going to do today, yesterday we spoke, we talked about people, you know, that are going on there posting questions. And many of the questions I get are, you know, the financing piece, obviously, and, and stages of, uh, you know, if you're looking to buy a home. And one of the biggest things I have a one video that went viral, it's, it's talking about credit and credit hacks and how to get your credit scores up. So we're going to talk about more in, in detail on that in the second segment today. But what I want to talk about in the first segment is refinancing. Refinancing in 2019. How it can help you. So we know rates have gone up in the last year or two. Okay. However, also the Fed has raised rates um, up to you know 75 basis points, 0.75 to 1, 1%. They're also expected to raise rates in 2019. So the assumption is we're going to see rates in a two-year time span go up one and a, at least one and a half to two percent. Okay, so here's what this means: if you have a home equity loan, if you have an adjustable rate loan, I'm going to just stop with those two right now. Please listen. One, the home equity loan, you might want to talk with your tax advisor. But in most cases, you lost the tax benefits of that interest, writing off that interest. That could be huge because a lot of people, they, they've paid off their mortgages. There was, some, there, there was some thing out there a year or two, three years ago saying, you know, pay off your mortgage within, with a home equity loan because the rates are so low. They were. So what happened is many people re, refinanced their home with a home equity loan. I had a home equity loan 10, 15 years ago. It was prime minus like one. So the rate was like one and a half or something crazy. Okay. Those are gone. So most likely if you have a a home equity loan, one, you lost your tax benefits. So if you owe a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars on a home equity loan, all the interest you're paying, you're paying interest. You're not getting any tax benefits on paying that off. Two, with the Fed raising rates, let's say in the next, between 2018, 2019, they've raised rates. I'm going to project that over those two, t- two year time frame, they raised rates 2%. What that means to you, let's say that your rate two years ago was 3.99. Okay. The end of 2018, or you might not have even seen it yet. That rate is going up. It's going to go up most likely 1%. Okay? So you're at 399. Now you're going to get to 499. 2019. Let's say the the Fed raises rates three times. The norm is they're raising rates by 0.25. So now it's going to go up another 75 basis points. 75.75. So, might not happen immediately. But in next year... Your rate's going to go from four nine nine. I'm going to I'm going to round this up. We'll say five. Now your rate's going to be five seven five. So, is that benefiting you? If we're in an environment where rates were not moving, I'd say yeah, just stick it out. If you know rates are going to are going up, we know it. It's projected. It, it's talked about on every news channel. They're going up. Lock yourself into a 30-year fixed or a 20-year fixed or a 15-year fixed, whatever you want. Fix that rate in so you don't see any more increases. Also, check with your tax advisor. Is your home equity interest still deductible or not in your case? Most likely it's not. So if you owe a $200,000 loan 
and let's say the rate's 4%, I don't know on the top of my head what the payment is, but let's say you pay five, $700 a month in interest, so that is $8,400 in interest that you're going to pay throughout the year. If you're in the 25% tax bracket, I mean, you're, you're throwing that money away. You just picked up a, even a 20%, 16, you're going to get a $2,000 tax break for that if you can write it off. I hope you understand what I'm, I'm going here. If it's not tax deductible, you're, you're just blowing $8,400 in interest. If it is tax deductible, you're going to get paid 8400 but you're probably going to get a two or $3,000 tax credit off of that, negating or bringing your, your interest paid down to about five grand versus 8400 Take advantage of these things. There, it, it, it's the tax laws. Take advantage of them. Don't, get, don't just throw away money. Hopefully you're listening to this channel to be a good steward of your monies. So that, that's one reason why I am asking people to look at what you have and possibly refinance. So one, you're on an adjustable rate, or two, you're on an adjustable rate, and it's a home equity loan. That's a double whammy. So get out of that thing, okay? The next thing is, okay, Dan, I have a 4% interest rate, okay? But I need, I, I have about 50000 in credit cards, okay? What's the rate on those credit cards? I don't even want to look. Well, look. Oh, boy, 22%. 23%, 18%, 28%. Okay, well, how about if we consolidate that all into a new mortgage? We're not going to do the home equity loan because I want you to get the tax benefits. So we, we consolidate that, that into a new mortgage, and your rate now is four, and we're going to put you at four. And I'm throwing these numbers out. I'm, this isn't a, a, an ad or wherever where I'm giving you APR and all that. I'm just using this as an example. You, now we go, and your rate is, I'll just say five. Dan, I don't want to go from four to five. You're paying 20% on the credit cards and you're not writing off anything. If we balance all that out and say, okay, here's your monthly payments on your mortgage and all these credit cards, I can pretty much guarantee that what we're going to do is structure that. We're going to put you on a 30 year mortgage, but I'm going to put you into a plan where we're going to say, okay, we're going to probably save you. We're probably going to save you $2,000 a month. And I can almost promise you that. So call me if you're, you're buried in, in credit card debt. So what we're going to do is we're going to take $1,000 a month, and we're going to start applying that to your, to your, uh, your well, at first, we're going to save that 2000 bucks. Well, the reason why you got $50,000 in the hole, because you're not making enough to, to satisfy your lifestyle. Okay? So we're going we're gonna to stretch out this loan to probably a 30-year term. Bring down your payment 2000 bucks a month. All right? So you're going to pay that lower payment for a while. We're going to do, we're going to set that extra money or we're going to, hopefully we're going to start setting money aside to give you a slush fund. We want six months of a reserve income into a savings account, throw it in the savings account. Don't touch it. Once you get to that point, now we're going to start sending an extra thousand dollars a month to your mortgage and get that thing paid off. You'd be surprised that we would probably pay that off quicker after this scenario, after the consolidation, then you would have otherwise paid if you just continued just to pay your mortgage payment. That's my goal. So yes, we're going to go to a 30-year term. We're going to put some reserve funds away. Once that's done, we're going to start really loading up on that mortgage and probably pay it off in 10, 12, 13 years. You otherwise had 18, 20 years left. So that's how it makes sense to refinance. It, these I'm not playing with numbers. These are these are things that I do daily for, for people that really call and listen, and they're like, Dan, let's give this a try. And then they're flabbergasted. So they're like, you know what? This, this works. But yeah, don't be wowed because, you know, my rate is three. I'm going to five. Let's look at it. Does it make sense to do this? Conversely, if you have no other debt, keep the three. But if you have fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars in debt that you're at a twenty percent interest rate, or I get this a lot. Well, Dan, I got twelve months free financing. You owe forty thousand dollars. You're not going to pay it off in twelve months, you know. And I don't know where rates are going to be in twelve months. So that's another reason why you would like to refinance right now, you know. And don't let rates get any higher. So those are the two biggest you know, reasons to refinance. Now, what we're going to do is break down each category of loan 
and I'm going to show you, you know, what the pros and cons are on different types of loans. And I might lose you on this one, but I will, I, I'm going to wait till the next segment because I really want to dive into these. These are the, these are the loan programs that I want you to pay attention to that are out there that you could take advantage of. Okay. There is, there's conventional loans and I'll explain that in more detail. Then there's government, what they call government guaranteed loans. And you've heard of some of these, if not all of them. That consists of FHA, VA, and USDA. Those are rural areas. And in Illinois, I'm in Illinois. If you go far enough out, I live in the St. Charles, Geneva area. You go just a little bit past me, and I do USDA loans. I do USDA loans on condos, believe it or not out in the far suburbs. So we're going to really dig down on these different programs and some, you know, the, the pros and cons and benefits of all of these. So um, also, I, I always throw this in. It, it, I try to throw this in at the end of each of these segments. Please do yourself a favor and, and, and monitor your credit and find out what your credit scores are and see if there's anything, you know, any issues with it or things you can help fix in, those, in, the, in your credit. So go to do yourself a favor. Go to credit scores, it's plural, credit scores and more.com. Please do one thing. If you do only do one thing this evening, click step one. It'll take you two, three minutes tops. That'll give you your credit score, credit monitoring, uh, identity theft, and it'll give you a lot of tools, educational tools in regards to your credit. So I hope you check that out. But stay tuned. When we come back, we're going to talk about uh, different programs for refinancing. Then we're going to go over jumbo, large loans. So anybody out there looking for a five, six, $1 million loan, I could, I'd love to help you. So stay tuned. I will be back in two minutes. Welcome back to the Mortgage Update with Dan Frio. I, of course, am Dan Frio. We're going to continue our conversations on refinancing. So um, there's there's many different programs out there if you're looking to refinance. So this this segment is basically for homeowners. Um, and then tomorrow we're going to talk about new home buyers and the process that you need to take if you're looking to buy a house in 2019. So there's there's different programs. Let's start with number one. You might hear of conventional financing, tra- your traditional mortgage, um, phrases like that. So what is a mortgage? What's a standard mortgage? Okay, a, mortgage, a standard mortgage or a conventional mortgage is a, a loan that all the banks make. Okay, that, I'm, I'm, that's in its most general terms. The qualifications for that is you need a, and this is everywhere, doesn't matter if you go to me or any of the other companies, is a, well, I'll, I'll rephrase that in a minute, is a 620 credit score. Okay. So if you don't know your credit score, find out your credit score. Because, and don't wait till the last minute to find out your credit score when you're, when you're pressing and saying, huh, you know, I got to see, because if you have a 619, you're not getting a conventional loan. Period. It doesn't work. Okay. So, you know, find out your credit score, see if there's anything wrong with it, any errors, what can you do to maybe improve it? Then there's a segment that it's called, or they're, they're referenced as government guaranteed loans. What it basically is, and it's in its simplest terms, is the government is insuring these loans in the event of default. So if you, the homeowner, you, you get in a, a government guaranteed loan, which is FHA, VA, or USSDA, and you default. Let's say you're in the house for three, four years and just life goes bad. God throws you a curveball you just can't come out of. And you get to the point, it's like, I can't afford this. I got, you know, I got to move. I got to do something. It, it, and then they foreclose on your home. What happens is the, this, the government insurance behind all of this is kind of makes the bank whole so they don't lose, you know, all the money in, in the loss. So that's basically what a what the uh, government guaranteed programs are. Okay, so now let's talk about how how you can refinance with these programs. Okay, so recently on a conventional loan, you were only and you were only able to refinance and go eighty percent of your home's value. That has been recently changed to eighty five percent. 
Okay. What I'm referencing on these loan programs right now is you're looking to refinance to pay off bills because a lot of people have a lot of debt that they're just buried. They're making their minimum monthly payments on everything at 20, 25% and they're just getting by. So in the last 10 years, we've seen an uptick in home values. Take advantage of these things. And I'm not, I'm again, my goal isn't to put you into any more debt. I want to structure this debt to make it make sense and take advantage of all the tax laws. Okay. So you can cash what they call cash out or refinance and pay off bills up to 85% on a conventional loan. You need a 620 credit score. Okay. So that's, if you have a 620 credit score, that might be your best bet, but it might not be. So let's say, for example, um, you, you don't have the 620 credit score. You have a 619. What are my options? Well, you have a couple options. And I'm going to go through this in detail, and we'll check off to see what you might or might not qualify for. So let's start with, I'm going to go VA, USDA, and then follow it up with the FHA program. Okay? S- stay with me. So... These programs, most of them will go up to, like a VA, you can go up to 100%, 100% of your home's value, pull out money, and pay off creditors. Or we just get cash. But in this event, we're not trying to get in any more debt. Let's, let's try to get you out of, out of debt the most efficient way. You can go up to 100% financing and pay off debt. Well, are you a veteran? Have you been discharged, honorably discharged? Yes or no? If you say yes, that's probably the program we're going with. You say, Dan, I'm not a veteran. Okay, we're, we can't go that program. So that scraps that one. USDA. Are you in one of the USDA regions where you would qualify, your home qualifies? Just go to USDA, um, Google it, USDA, my home eligibility. And it'll go, go to a website, you plug in your address, it'll say yes or no. So let's say you are not, you're in Chicago or the Chicagoland area and you just, you're, you you do not qualify. Okay. Now we're at the FHA piece. So we're going to look into the FHA program. Great program. A lot of people bad, you know, say things bad about it. You know, I don't want an FHA loan. That's for people with bad credit. No, no, it's not. It's a very, very, very good program. Probably 75%, 50 to 75% of the business I do is FHA. Um, and there's a reason for it. So an FHA might be the program for you. I, I, I'll leave it at that because I don't want to. I don't want to get you any more confused on refinancing. What I'm trying to stress is, we want to refinance you only if you're using the money for good purposes. Okay, you want to pay off high interest rate credit cards. So we're going to restructure things to make it make sense. I also have a home renovation loan that we just launched. You can go up to virtually. of your home's value pull out money to rehab your home or do pretty much whatever you want to your home. You can put an addition on. You can redo your whole kitchen. The cool thing is, is that 97% is based on the future value of your home after the repairs. So what we do is we get your estimates on what you're looking to do so, Dan, I'm going to redo my kitchen, finish my bathroom, and put on a garage. Well, your value of your house right now is 150000 All that is going to take 50000 So we're going to owe 200000 Your after value is two fifty. Perfect. Let's do it. So we can, we can qualify you in that. So I have a home renovation program. If you're looking to, to fix up your house, you don't want to move. But you've really, you know, let your house go for the last 10 years because the market crashed. You didn't want to put any more money into it. But now you're like, you know what? I want to stay. House values are back up. I love my neighborhood. I love the schools. My kids, I don't want to move. But I do need a bunch of repairs to my house. Call me. Ask, Say, Dan, I need that home renovation program. I'll walk you right through it. Okay. So now what I want to talk about are big loans. Jumbo loans. Okay. What I mean by jumbo. The normal loan amount or the standard loan amount for conventional financing, you can get a loan up to $484,350. Don't ask why it's that amount. The the government sets these numbers. It's an odd number. You would think, okay, well, $485,000. But no, 
38,484,350. 38,484,350. So what happens if I need a loan bigger than that? In the past, you normally had to go with a, con- or a jumbo mortgage, okay? The bad thing about jumbo mortgages are there's a whole, there's entirely different underwriting guidelines. It's harder to qualify, and the rates are worse. So in most cases, you take an adjustable rate, which I hate adjustable rate mortgages, especially in today's you know, atmosphere. Right now, I have a program that will go up to $726,000, and we use standard guidelines, and the rates are better. They're better than my normal conventional rates. So I just, on my way, right when I left the office, on my way to the station, I ran rates on a scenario. And I'll give you the APR. But I, And again, this is a rate quote. I Legally, I normally have to you know, give you all the things. I'm just going to give you the details that I had on this particular um, program. I had a rate at 4.625 with an APR. And this is, you want to pay attention to this. And I'll explain this in a little more detail in a second. With an APR of 4.65 on a 30-year fixed rate. That was a $700,000 loan on a $1 million property with a 740 credit score. Okay, 30-year fixed, 4.625. So if your rate, if you're on an adjustable rate and you know it's going to go over that, or you're on a rate that's higher than that, call in. That's a 30-year fixed rate. Standard underwriting, Every, nothing's really different. And your fees, basically your fee will be your credit report and, and, and an appraisal. Um, and that totals probably 500 bucks. Uh, so take advantage of that program. So I'm going to conclude it at that. If I could be of any help, truly, I have, I get, I get, I don't know, I can't tell you how many calls I get a day. People are kind of flabbergasted when they get me on the phone. I, guys, I'll answer. Um, if I don't answer, I'll, I'll call you back. It means I'm on the phone with somebody else and, Hope to God I am on the phone when you do call because that means I'm helping somebody else as well. So if you want to talk to me personally, please give me a call at 630-338-1160. I'm going to give you other ways to learn some things. And if I can help anybody in your family, neighbors, coworkers, um, anybody, if they're interested in any of this information, please go to my website. I post everything there. Uh, it's, it's 1160 Mortgage, so 1160mortgage.com. Why is it named that? Because I'm on 1160 Radio, AM Radio in Chicago. Um, you can also go to the mortgageupdate.net. That'll route you there as well. Go over at the top. There's going to be a uh, link. That go, it's YouTube rate and radio stations or radio broadcasts or radio shows. Every show that I've done is on there, and it's segmented out, and it tells you exactly what that show is. Share it with people, if you would, please. Uh, the goal is, you know, I'm trying to, I'm on the radio to reach as many people as I can. Help me help others. So, um, again, my name is Dan Frio. Thank you so much for listening. Give me a call at 630-338-1160 on the web at 1160mortgage.com or just Google me, Dan Frio, D-A-N-F-R-I-O. I'd love to help. So thank you again for, for uh, listening t- tonight. God bless. I'm back tomorrow. You've been listening to The Mortgage Update with Dan Frio. For over 10 years, Dan has been helping AM 1160 listeners. With so many companies to choose from and hundreds of loan options, the mortgage process can be confusing and costly. Be sure to listen each day for Dan and learn the difference between FHA, VA, and conventional loans. You'll also learn how to negotiate lower interest rates and fees, as well as steps to buying your first home and whether refinancing makes sense. 